right, guys, welcome back to Full Circle with Joyce. And thank you for your company this morning. I do appreciate those of you who are already engaging with us. Again, you can catch me on our SMS line, which is double two triple nine. You can also reach me on social media at Switch TV KE on Instagram and at Switch TV Kenya on Facebook and Twitter. And let me just quickly acknowledge those of you who are already engaging with us. I have Abby Tush Jr. You say you're watching us from Embu, Kamau, Gitariwa, Tumaini, Kamai, Kawaida from Nyandara County. Lovina Ronia, um, you're watching us from Kayolis. Spinika Ondieki from Tasia, Wasema Ukondani, Masikals Kizil, uh, watching us from Flax, E. Maraquet County. And Chelsea Deno, Sebastian Chebistaga, following us from Kayole Police Station, Washeke Joyce, from Makuyu, Mbrembo Mwangi, from Lolongo, and so many others of you I'm going to be getting to you as we go along with the show. So do keep your feedback coming. Now, uh, my guests are here in studio, and as I did mention uh, for our viewpoint discussion today, we want to talk about maternal um, health care and women's rights, okay? And so let me just introduce them before we get started. So with me here is Angela Nguku, who's the executive director of the White Ribbon Alliance. Welcome to the show. Mm -hmm. I also have Wangeshi Washira, the executive director for the Center for Rights and Education Awareness. Good to have you here. Yeah. Now, ladies, um, today obviously is a very big day as far as women's rights, um, reproductive health, uh, and uh, maternal health is concerned with this conference taking place this week but just before we get into that i want to point your attention to a few other stories that have been making headlines and we can begin on page three of the standard um which uh the standard has this article here of course sexual health is going to be topping the agenda at this summit it says but also um, that birth control, it claims birth control has prevented over 500,000 abortions. And this is now saying that Kenya is on the right track in meeting the family planning goals of 2020. An estimated 6.1 million women are using different modern contraception. Um, ladies, of course, this is now your field. When you hear this statistic, does it resonate with you? Is this good progress? Is this, you know, as accurate as far as you understand? Um, I wouldn't start there, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. And I would start by understanding why do we think we need the summit now? Or why is the summit happening? Mm. And what are some of the gains that have been made? And what, are, what is it that we are, the, the, um, the world is coming to do in Nairobi? And so not just looking at one area, because if you look at the ICPD program of action, in 94, there's so much that was discussed. There are key things that were discussed. One of them was around population and development. Um, we, uh, we discussed about family, we discussed about um, the environment and sustainable development and the like. And so the ICPD program of action was, has been called on because it has been realized that there had been progress, but very slow. Not just in Kenya, but across the world. But in Kenya, we've realized that it's very slow because why? We still have very high unmet need for contraception or family planning, and we know contraception or family planning helps in reducing maternal mortality or maternal deaths. Just to bring you to perspective and to relate the two things that you've just asked, in Kenya we lose an average of 8,000 women every year from childbirth complications and pregnancy. That translates to around 22 women dying every day in Kenya. We are losing 34,000 newborns. Anyone who is alive in Kenya today knows that exams are going on. We have very high rates of adolescent pregnancies and so many of them are dropping out of school. 13,000 I think last year we lost about 430 something thousand women, mm. adolescent girls were pregnant. So basically, um, and we have very high rates of child marriage in Kenya and FGM. Mm. And so looking at this, uh, I'll not just look at one area, I'm looking, I would look at what are the objectives of this summit at this moment in time? And why do we think it is the high time as, as, um, as everybody, not just because the summit is not just bringing political leaders only. It is bringing everyone else to the, to, 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 to the country. What are the issues that need to be discussed and why at this moment in time? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, maybe Wangeshi, as you answer that question, you can tell me a bit about the Center for Rights and Education and Awareness. What is it that you guys uh, really focus on? Um, so CRU, we are a women's rights organization and our focus is uh, at the heart 
of the women and girls of this country in terms of ensuring that women's voices are heard, the voices, uh, the issues that are continue to affect women, whether it's around issues of violence against women and girls, very, very practical things, issues of uh, female genital mutilation and other harmful uh, practices that continue uh, to inhibit women and girls realize their full potential. And that linked to the summit that is happening uh, this week in Nairobi. Um, we have seen, um, and our work is not only in Nairobi, we are now 12 counties, some of the counties where we are, we have the highest cases of FGM or, or um, harmful practices. Narok at 40%, whereas the country is at 21%. Some of the counties where we are in Kilifi having about uh, 21,000 uh, teenage pregnancies mm -hmm. in, a, in one year. What does that tell us? Mm -hmm. uh, and very, very connected to the summit that is happening in this Nairobi, 25 years mm -hmm. um, down the line. Uh, can we really be saying that um, the country has progressed. I mean, in terms of laws that have been put, I think Kenya has come very far. We have FGM Act, which is very, very good and, mm -hmm. and progressive. But we and have also... I believe they're saying that a lot of progress has been made, at least on that front. Yeah. You would in, agree? Yeah, I, I would agree in terms of putting in the various laws in mm -hmm. place. But it's one thing to have place uh, laws in place. You put the laws in place, but you have no resources to be able to implement mm -hmm. these laws. Mm -hmm. uh, laws. Mm -hmm. and, and practical laws, FGM Act is in place. Um, we have a Sexual Offences Act that was passed in 2006. We have our Constitution of, of, of Kenya. Mm -hmm. We have Kenya is also a signatory to international laws, whether it's uh, CEDAW, whether it's the Maputo Protocol. I mean, Kenya, in terms of ensuring the laws are in place, have done very, very good. But in right. terms of having that um, implemented, having that been put resources, having that been given the, the, and the, when I talk about resources, it's both human resources, because why are women still dying in some of the counties? Why well, are women uh, not able to access those facilities? Right. Let me, let me just pause you there, yeah. you know, uh, now that we've brought up FGM, because that's another story in the dailies today, and you can follow up on page 16 of the standard. Uh, again, quoting that uh, we've uh, made uh, significant progress in fighting in FGM. However, the article does point out that it is surprising that medical workers are actually some of the culprits fueling the, the practice of FGM in private and public medical facilities. In fact, it is estimated that 18% of all FGM cases are now performed by qualified medical personnel and they're replacing the traditional circumciser that the community worked so hard to convince, to abandon that practice. I, I think rightfully, um, as, as you put it, is that uh, we have seen that uh, as much as we're making progress, we also see a lot of uh, pushback. And a very, very practical um, example you've seen is that we've seen a doctor who come to court and ask the court that is it possible that to allow women at the age of 18 then to go to a hospital and practice um, mm. FGM. And that is matter that has been brought to court. So as you say that uh, it's being practiced in the, in the medical institution, probably there's something like that going, because by the time a doctor goes to court and says, allow women at the age of 18 then to go to, uh, to any of those facilities and practice FGM. But right. we're saying FGM in the country is not adding value. The women who have gone through FGM have practically been able to say it has not added any value at a personal level, at a community level, at a medical level it has not added any value okay. and what are we telling young girls that you wait till the age of 18 and then you go through FGM what are the implications mm -hmm. when it comes to childbirth for women who've gone through uh, FGM I mean it has been seen all over uh, the world that it hasn't added value in fact it increases the complication during uh, delivery okay. and, and also for younger girls is that for them if they go through FGM in most communities then they're eligible for marriage all right yeah um, Angela as you respond to or give us your thoughts on that same question then about FGM and this alleged progress that we've now made. Tell us also a bit about your work with the White Ribbon Alliance. So the White Ribbon Alliance is a people-led movement that basically advocates for maternal and newborn health and um, for adolescent and youth, young people, around pregnancy and childbirth. So our issues around quality of care, equity in terms of fairness and distribution of resources 
and access for those resources for reproductive health and dignity in care, during care. Why am I saying this? Is because um, quality of care and why we focus on quality of care is because last year a report was released in this country by the Minister of Health itself that talked about the poor quality of care that led to women dying in 2014. So out of the nine women who died in 2014 in our healthcare facilities, the confidential inquiry into maternal deaths in this country found out that nine out of ten of those women died as a, as a result of substandard care. Mm -hmm. Two, when we look about, uh, when we are talking about the universal health coverage at the moment, because that is the, the, the buzzword going around everywhere across the world, we cannot talk about universal health coverage without talking about quality of care. The two of them must go hand in hand. And so if our women are dying because of poor quality of care, then there, there is something that needs to be done or something needs to be brought to the perspective. Mm. Two, in terms of equity, um, equity is about fairness in terms of how resources are distributed and the, one of the underpinning principles of universal health coverage. And so we are seeing women from the slums, women, migrant women and refugees. We are seeing women in some areas and even some cohorts of women, especially the young people, not able to access um, reproductive health care in health facilities. Why? Because either they are cut or because of ma they are marginalized for them to be able to access such services. And if you are talking about universal health coverage, leaving no one behind, including the women with disabilities, then we, what we are saying is that at the end of the day, that needs to be addressed. And the other thing is about dignity in care. Mm -hmm. Respect has been a big issue. I'm sure any uh, uh, alive Kenyan in, Ke in Kenya today knows that respectful maternity care, ris disrespect in our health facilities has been the talk of town everywhere. Mm -hmm. And so for us, why we exist is to bring the voices of women and girls and young people and newborns to the fore. Because if we are talking about still losing mothers in this era, since 1963, since independence, 25 years since the ICPD in 94, then something is wrong somewhere needs to be done. So at White Tribune, we, 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 we educate people on their rights. And in addition, we also empower them to be able to voice out their issues and hold their duty bearers to account, whether it is their service providers and whoever else is, is, is accountable. Mm. And also hold them to account because realize that they also have the power within themselves to make a change within themselves. Mm -hmm. And also educate them on their rights and entitlements because health is a basic human right and nobody should die as a result of poor health care. And so... Um, I want to talk uh, slightly one of the things that we've done that has really been, that was launched yesterday and it's about, it's a campaign that we started um, to find out what quality of care means to women and girls. And it was called the What Women Want campaign, where we went out to find out if women are dying because of poor quality of care, then what is the problem? What does quality mean to women? And so we surveyed 120,000 women in Kenya. And what they told us quality means to them is not what the technocrats, the academicians think quality of care means to them. Mm -hmm. Women in Kenya told us about key things that even me, it got me a surprise because we interviewed women with disabilities, young women and women and general women, women from all walks of life. And one thing that they told us that the reason why they are not, uh, why to them what quality means and the reason why they are not going to health facilities or they are shunning them is because there's no water sanitation and hygiene in those health facilities. The okay. toilets are dirty, the bathrooms are dirty, the linen is dirty. And so for them the top quality, the top request for, for reproductive health, quality of care means clean toilets, clean bathrooms, clean health facilities, and the like. Right. Two, they told us about respect. Respect tops the list. Whereas you and me might think that we need more health facilities, women need respect and dignity in, in those health facilities. Call me by name. Tell me what you're doing to me. Don't abuse me. Don't slap me. And so that is what quality means to women. So as much as we tell women go to their health facilities, are we ensuring that they actually respond to their felt, self-articulated needs of what quality means to them? Yeah. So at the end of the day, the report is, is available online for anyone to read. But that got us thinking that for sure, for sure, if we think, we need to rethink and start bringing the key stakeholder <coughs> on the table, that is the women and girls who are utilizing those facilities. And one surprising thing that the women and girls told us is that uh, our, leaders, that yes, our leaders have told us that uh, our health facilities are okay for us to go there. But until they start going to these, those facilities, we mm. will never believe what they're telling us because if they cannot use the same place, sure. we can't go there ourselves. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, guys, we're uh, going to continue this discussion when we get back um, from our break. Again, I'm with Angela Nguku, the Executive Director of White Tribune Alliance, and Wangeshi Washira, the Executive Director of the Center for Rights, for, uh, Rights Education and Awareness. And we're talking about maternal uh, health care and women's rights. And we're going to continue this after we come back from the break. We want to find out what exactly is this ICPD summit about? Why is there so much contention about it? I'm sure many of you have seen a lot of religious leaders come 
come out and speak on against it political leaders also on either side of the fence what is going on that's what we're going to be interrogating when we come back this is full circle with joyce stay tuned All right, everybody, welcome back to Full Circle with Joyce. And um, I'm here with my guest discussing women's uh, maternal health, rather, and women's rights. Now, this year marks the 25th anniversary of uh, the International Conference on, on Population and Development, which took place in Cairo in 1994. And during that conference, leaders had articulated a bold vision regarding the relationships between population, development, and individual well-being. That program of action, was adopted by 179 governments um, and uh, in it they recognize that reproductive health and women's empowerment as well as gender equality are the pathways to sustainable development so fast forward to today uh, I believe it's from today until Thursday there's the ICPD uh, conference uh, you know marking the 25 years uh, since so there's been a lot of debate about it very briefly maybe one of you can just explain what is the purpose of this summit mm -hmm. uh, is there a specific reason it's being held in Nairobi this time mm -hmm. uh, maybe touch on that as we get further into it mm -hmm. I think rightfully as you said sometimes um, uh, we say that uh, when you don't have information um, or when people don't have information, then they make ki all kinds of stories. So rightfully, as you said, um, what is happening, ICPD, 25 years, it happened in Cairo, and an action plan was developed. And mm -hmm. that action plan is what is being reviewed today, 25 years after, in Nairobi, to be able to see what's the progress that we've made in um, different parts of the world. Because this is not only about Nairobi, it's the whole of the world is assembling in Nairobi to be able to review 25 years from the day uh, Cairo happened. Mm -hmm. Have we made change when it comes to issues of um, harmful practices? Mm -hmm. Have we made any changes when it comes to issues of uh, addressing issues of sexual violence? Mm -hmm. Have we made any ch changes when it comes to issues of access to family planning? Have we made any changes when it comes to issues of ensuring that we, um, we have proper maternal care for women and neonatal care for, for children. Mm -hmm. So the meeting that is happening in Nairobi, first is a big privilege even for the country to have hosted this uh, meeting here in Nairobi. Okay. Meaning that the conversation that uh, is happening, it also does resonate with our everyday life because we are talking about women giving birth. What does that mean to the Kenyans? Mm -hmm. Every other day there is a new baby being born. But mm -hmm. what conditions are that baby being born when women walk 12 kilometers, 20 kilometers to go give birth? And when they get to a facility, the facility doesn't have the necessary um, resources. What right. are the commitments from our governments? Because we have our governments that did commit. We had 180, uh, 180 seven countries commit to be able to accelerate this have mm -hmm. they done that mm. have they made have they put resources to where they are speaking or they speak and they're not putting resources there so the meeting that is happening in nairobi is to be able to review 25 years from cairo have we made any progress and if we have made progress how does that progress look like are we happy about that progress and what is it that we can be able to accelerate that progress mm -hmm. so that for example we can move to um, uh, cases of FGM to zero? Can we move cases of uh, sexual and gender-based violence to zero? Can we move cases of access to ma maternal, uh, maternal health where we have no other woman dying in the name of giving birth? Can we move that to zero? Can we have access to family planning for all women in at, at, at the right age, right. was and when? So that is what the Nairobi uh, uh, Summit is looking into. All right. Yeah. Well, that said, it, it has had a lot of um, debate around it. Um, even you know the highest of our political leaders coming out to tell the organizers of the conference that Kenya is a God-fearing nation and is uh, that you know these are it's an African society and we have Kenyan values. So you know clearly there's something there that. Uh, is, is being pointed to with that remark. I always say that my people will perish for lack of knowledge. The people who are speaking probably they have not found out. This document was developed in Cairo. It wasn't developed in another pla in, in another even continent. It was developed in Egypt. It was developed in our own con in our own continent. Meaning they haven't found 
time to be able to uh, to review what were the agreements that were made in Cairo. So let me let me pause you there because at least looking at some of the articles online, you know, in our dailies and what um, uh, the groups sort of against this conference have been writing and talking about or proposing, and you can come into this conversation as well, Angela. It seems like one of the biggest issues is on the commitments that are to be made as a result of the conference, right? Mm -hmm. So I think there's an overall understanding that these are good things for us to to aspire towards. Of course, we want better maternal health care. Of course, we want, you know, better provisions as far as rights for women and children are concerned. I think where a lot of people are then now raising questions is on the commitments that are being asked to be made. And I quote one here, um, this apparently the IC states that I, the ICPD organizers uh, quote that, you know, marginalized group in, groups, including minority ethnic groups, young people, unmarried people, lesbians, gays, bisexuals, transgender and intersex people, people with disabilities and the rural urban poor continue to face barriers in accessing quality care. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a, certainly is a section of our populace that is then you know, they, they've, that is all they've heard, right? Or that's, you know, is striking them the most from what they've heard. And that is where a lot of debate is then stemming from. What would be your response to that? Just to add on to what Wanjie Gleshia said, I'm going to talk as a Kenyan. We have a constitution in place in this country. Remember what Wanjie has said, this is a, an international conference. It is not an Nairobi conference. There are issues that are not Kenya contextually. They are not in the context of Kenya. Mm -hmm. There are issues that are in other countries. Right. And so this is an international conference there. They are going to discuss and commit to their countries, not to Kenya. But hasn't Kenya signed on to this program? Kenya is among I, the I'm coming there. Tonight. I'm coming there. Realize that the program of action is not just embedded on the program of action from Cairo. <coughs> and if you read, and I'm saying this because I've been on studio with organizers of ICPD 25. There are no new commitments. There are no, there's no new program of action that is going to be discussed. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in this conference. What is going to be discussed are the commitments that, were, that we are going to commit to accelerate the program of action. It was very clear, I listened to the co-chair and the co-convener mm. of uh, ICPD 25, we are not doing new, new program of action, it is a convening. And I want to bring um, Kenyans to perspective. As Wangechi said, sometimes it's good to interrogate documents. Realize we have a constitution that is very clear on what is illegal and illegal in this country. Mm -hmm. So that is, to me, that is a starting point. Number two, the four, there, are, there are themes in this conference and objectives of this conference. Number one is around ensuring we achieve universal health coverage for women and girls. Their reproductive health rights. That stems from Cairo 94. Number two, finance the same. How do we finance and accelerate that and ensure that the gains that were made since 25 years ago are still being accelerated to date? The other thing is around ensuring that the three zeros that uh, Wangeshi has talked about are addressed. Uh, um, sexual gender-based violence, um, family, unmet need for family planning, and maternal mortality because we are still losing very high numbers. And to me, those are the things that should be worrying Kenyans because we are in a, embedded in a constitution. The other thing that we are going to talk about is we are seeing so many young people who are in this country, dependent people, and that's why we talk about the demographic dividend. Mm. The population that is working and the population that is not working, they are not adding up. So we cannot really say we are, we, are, we are going to develop as a country if we know that the most able population is not really driving the agenda. And then, sustainable, we are talking about the sustainable development goal. Without ICPD, we cannot achieve um, sustainable development goals. Then the other thing that I think now people need to come to wake up to is the fact that the, 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 the program of action talks about sexual reproductive health and rights for migrant populations mm -hmm. and in fragile settings. Mm -hmm. Where in that context, as he talked about the things that Kenyans are worried about, in a country that are, has a very progressive Bill of Rights, in a country that are constitution in place. So sometimes, but I am not defending, I'm not defending anything. Doesn't it talk about lesbians, uh, I have not seen that in the document I've read. And if other people have read, I don't know. And so I cannot defend. Realize I'm not talking from a government. I, I am sure. civil society. Mm -hmm. And I'm also a Kenyan who is very concerned on the key issues that are afflicting Kenyans. And so for me, as a country, the things that should be worrying us at, how are we losing 22 women every day in Kenya because of poor quality of care? How are we losing 34,000 newborns every year in this country? How are we still not able to access the high unmet need for contraception? Why right. are we still having such high rates of adolescent pregnancy? Why is yeah. child marriage in this era still an issue? Yeah. So I feel like there are people who are trying to uh, run away from their own, the things that they are supposed to be doing and holding the right people to account, including themselves. 
and running and hiding in the name of bringing other things which are in other countries to our country. Well, so to me as a Kenyan... Me, let's pause there because mm -hmm. I want us to come back to this discussion on gender, maternal health, mm -hmm. gender-based violence because that is absolutely massive even today in 2019. But um, as we wrap up, you know, just the pointers on the ICB, ICPD program and you guys, please do send in your feedback to double two triple nine as far as what you think about this. What have you understood about it? What are some of the messages that you're hearing? Perhaps there are things that we need to address with that. But do you agree with Angela that you've not seen anything about, um, you know, bisexuals, lesbians, gays within the program? And if so, th does that mean then, you know, everybody from our president himself is just pulling this out of thin air because he's also spoken about it? I think uh, Angie has put it very, very uh, well that 25 years there was a commitment that was made. And what is happening in Nairobi is that from the commitments that were made, were, they are being reviewed. I have not seen not unless there is a new document that uh, is in place, and I have not mm -hmm. seen it myself. And this is a, this 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 um, um, summit is being led by government of Kenya, is being led by the Denmark uh, government, is also being led by UNFPA. Mm -hmm. So meaning the government of Kenya, this conference is That's not exactly coming to why change. It's, it's, it's not it's coming so to change <laughs> the the the, the, the family of fabric of our country. Yeah. It's not coming to but change anything. But I think anything. that's exactly why this conversation is so polarizing because it is being led by the government mm -hmm. of Kenya. Yet our own president and our own deputy president have also come out to say you know, we're not going to have such and such in our country. So that already is very confusing for a lot of the populace. I think they're just many pedestrian uh, comments that honestly, when they would have taken some time to read through, to Perhaps be able to understand. Perhaps we should have had yeah. a lot more yeah. information I, about I, I, this. I feel like there's a lot of, um, I, 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 I listened to that and I was a bit mesmerized, but well, Kenya is a political country. A lot of times <laughs> I say that. So uh, <coughs> some of the things that I hear, I'm like, uh, we are the host country. Mm. And there's no way people can come and try to push things in your throat. But realize what I said is an, a global conference. And, 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 and so listening to that, because I've heard it and I'm like, But you well. didn't answer my question, though, mm -hmm. because Kenya has signed on to this. We are one of the 179. Yes. Yeah, 179. Right? So when commitments are made, it is made for all the 179 countries to sign no, on to it. No, I disagree with you. Realize mm -hmm. there are commitments per country. Mm -hmm. That is a program of action. Mm -hmm. That is not a commitment. Mm -hmm. The program of action has talked about the five themes that I've alluded to, that they are coming to accelerate. But each country is going to make a promise, a, a commitment on, on their own. Kenya, mm. there are commitments by the Kenyan government, the development partners in Kenya, the civil society, religious groups, everybody, including the media, should commit to ensuring that this is because I believe media is supposed to uphold the governments and any other co people do commitments to account. But at the end of the day, these are countries from 179 countries in Kenya. If they come, if someone comes from other countries to do their commitments for their own country on their own issues, that has nothing to worry Kenya mm. because that is not what is in our constitution. Mm -hmm. That is not what the Kenyan fabric is all about. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a lot of mix up and confusion and I think that needs to be spoken about and, and, and people need to come out and I say one of the things that I feel we live in in a country is a country that is only educated when it comes to civic. Our civic education is about elections. Right. But when it comes to our social goods like health, education, things like um, water and sanitation environment, nobody, uh, nobody does anything. And so to me, listening to these conversations, I think it's the high time that we rise up at Kenya and say, can we get... Can we be educated on what is really concerns us and what we ought to do as Kenyans? Well, Wangeshi, you mm -hmm. know, in your work with the Center for Rights and Education and Awareness, you know, how involved have you guys been in, in trying to shed more information about exactly what this conference is about? Because these um, sentiments, these worries, if you will, didn't just start this week, right? It's been going on for a very long time. To your point then about taking education and awareness beyond the politics, mm -hmm. beyond elections. Mm -hmm. How much of that is, you know, the people in your space? How much of that are you guys doing? Um, I think the spaces where we are, we are able to cover, um, again, because, because of the resources that we have, we can only be able to cover a, a, a certain percentage of, of, of the country. But we have a bigger responsibility because Kenya having been the one hosting this, um, this conference, I think we should have been able to see more resources being put by the state to ensure that Kenyans are able to understand 
what is this conference mm -hmm. coming to do? And um, she's put it very, very well. When it comes to our politics, we're able to put some, mm, resources. some resources to some level of civic education. But a lot of this work is left by to civil society organizations who are not able to cover the whole of the country. Mm -hmm. So the spaces where we have been, and, and I'm happy because we are here this morning, to be able to occupy this space and be able to demystify what is ICPD and what it is not. Mm -hmm. um, because I think, I keep saying that when people don't have information, then they make all kind of, um, you know, um, when nature boards um, a, a space like this, then there's vacuum. And that vacuum, then people create kind of, of stories. So there's a lot of need for information to get out there. Finally, when the document is out or when the, the, the analysis is done, when we look at what, what ICPD uh, in Cairo achieved and what we have been able to achieve in Nairobi, I think that information should be out there. And then the other thing that this is a negotiated document at the end of the day. Countries, 179, is a negotiated document because at the end of the day, there going to implement and therefore I can only be able to say I'm going to implement one two three four five six seven eight nine ten commitments mm. and therefore as a, as a as a country then go and implement those uh, commitments so right. I think it would have been more uh, important to be able to see the state driving this agenda mm. Kenya is a host Right. Government of Kenya is yeah, at the front front, and very therefore, polar. It's been and a therefore very need <laughs> to speak the language and, right. and, and really be on the front front and, and not giving mixed signals. Certainly, and yeah. I think mixed signals is certainly the word because, yeah. uh, as you've said, we're the host, but there's been a lot of debate yes. about it, lack of information too. Ladies, unfortunately, my time is up, but I do think uh, we need to find some more time later on to specifically talk about maternal health care. I think that's going to take a whole lot of time on its own, um, particularly because, you know, Kenya um, right now, 362 maternal deaths per 100,000, which is still very high compared to other countries. Mm -hmm. And uh, you made a very interesting comment uh, during the break, I believe it was, that a lot of that is actually linked to gender based violence. Yeah, yeah. Very interesting conversation. If you guys would like to hear more about that, let me know. Double two triple nine is the SMS line and hopefully we can have our guest back in studio some other time. With that said, Asanteni Sana for your time again. And uh, we're going to take a short break right now as we get ready for our second hour for the day. And of course, we'll be talking about relationships and lifestyle coming up next on Full Circle with Joyce. Stay tuned. <laughs> 